Do you have documents on your system that you'd like to hide from prying eyes? Well, today I'm going to show you how to hide files and folders from within Windows for absolutely free. And some of these methods I bet you didn't know about. I know I didn't. Stay tuned. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. I've been working on computers for a really long time, and one thing tends to be true for just about every computer user, and that is that everybody has documents on their computer that they don't want other people to see. These documents may be a record of every account password for every website you've ever visited, or maybe you keep a diary on your computer that you would rather not have other people reading. Or <laughs> maybe it's something completely different that I won't get into here, but no judgment either way. Today, I'm going to show you how to hide documents and folders, starting with the most basic method and ending with a really cool manipulation of the NTFS file system. Now, none of these methods are going to include encrypting or password protecting files and folders. That's the obvious solution to this problem. Instead, today we're going to be talking about ways of obscuring files and folders, making them difficult and in some cases impossible to find unless you know exactly what you're looking for. Now, keep Keep in mind though, security through obscurity is not a valid way of securing files and folders. Everything that I'm showing you today could be discovered by someone who knows what they're looking for. And also, before we're done with this video, I'm going to show you how you can discover all of the different ways I'm showing you how to hide things. So before we're done, you're going to be someone who knows what they're looking for. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, here we are on Windows 11, and all of these tips should work on Windows 10 as well. But I'm using Windows 11 as an example because it's what I already have loaded on my test system anyway. So for all of these, we're gonna have to create a folder real quick, something that we can hide. So I'm just gonna call this one temp. And then from within this folder, we're gonna do most of the work that we're doing today. So the first thing I wanna show you today is how to just hide a folder. And this is the very basic way. This is by simply marking something as hidden. So if we right click here, we go new folder, and then we'll name this folder any anything. We'll call it hidden here. Now, if you want to mark this folder hidden, you just right click, go down to properties, and then right here, check hidden. And then when you hit okay, it should disappear. And there you go. Now you have a hidden folder. However, everybody knows this one. And all you have to do is come up here to view, go over to show, and show hidden items, and you can see hidden items. So as you can see, this way here is really easy to uncover. But if you simply want to hide something and the people that you're hiding it from don't have a lot of computer knowledge, this might be an easy way to do it and make it easier for you to find it in the future. However, let's move on to some more advanced methods. Okay, so for the next method, I'm going to show you how to make a hidden folder that is truly hidden. At least, kind of. So for that, let's close this real quick. I'm gonna make another one right next to here. So we're gonna go new folder. And for the name of this folder, you wanna make sure to name it holding your alt key and then typing 255 on the number pad. And then once you do that, hit enter. And as you can see, we now have no name for this folder, but we still have the picture of the folder. So we have to do something about that. So we're gonna right click on it. We're gonna go down to properties. And then from properties, we're gonna go all the way over to customize. And then from here, we wanna change the icon. And then from there, you wanna scroll down until you find a blank icon on this list right here. So I'm gonna pick this first one, hit okay, and then hit okay again. And as you can see, the folder has vanished. You can, however, find it if you mouse over it, it gives you the highlight that you would normally get from a regular folder. 
But from this, it does definitely obscure it. So if you were to put this into a random spot on your desktop, like over in the corner over here, maybe a little bit harder for people to find it. However, on this method right here, there is a problem with this method. Let me show you what it is. So if you were to right click, I'm gonna go back to properties, gonna go back to customize, change the icon again. I'm gonna change the icon to something else real quick. And then hit the apply button. And then I'm gonna change it back to the icon I originally picked before. And when I do that, as you can tell, it will come up as a black square. Now this black square is a problem with this method and it comes up every once in a while. So let me show you how you can fix this just in case it happens to you. Okay, so if you get the black square issue, unfortunately, I think it's just a glitch in the way that Windows displays thumbnails. So to fix this, essentially what you do is go down to your start menu, type disk cleanup, open up your disk cleanup, and then from this menu right here, you wanna uncheck everything except for thumbnails at the bottom. And then once you do that, go ahead and hit okay, and it's gonna go ahead and delete your thumbnail cache in Windows. And then from there, you still have to change the icon again. So go ahead and right click on it, go to properties, go to customize, go to change icon, and then scroll over and change the icon to something else again. And then once you do that, it should make it blank again. So if you ever run into this problem, make sure to delete your icon cache and it should solve the issue for you. Now the next way I'm gonna show you is actually a really cool method. And this is the one right here that inspired this video to begin with. So if we open up our temp folder right here, we can go ahead and delete this hidden folder right here. We don't need it anymore. We're gonna use a feature of NTFS to actually hide documents within other documents. And what this is called is alternative data streams. And let me show you how to do it. So the first thing that we need is some documents to hide. And luckily, I have those right here. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna click on a password file and a picture that I have here. And in fact, I got a zip file right here too because we're gonna do several things here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these right here I'm gonna go back to our original folder, and then I'm gonna paste these so we can manipulate these files here. Okay, so right here, I have a fake password file. Lots of people probably have these on their computer. No, these are not legitimate passwords. These are just fake passwords that I made up for the example in this video. So I wanna hide this password file inside of this picture. Let me show you how to do it. You right click on your folder here and hit open in terminal. And if yours opens up in PowerShell, you have to do this from command prompt. So what I would recommend doing is clicking on this little arrow right here, going into settings, and then setting the default profile to command prompt. Once you do that, go ahead and hit save, and it should open up in command prompt after that. And then to get it to open, you just go ahead and close it, right click and open terminal again, and you should get your command prompt. So what we're gonna do right now is if we run a directory, we can see that we have our nice JPG, our password text, and our secret zip, and that's it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this password text and we're gonna put it into this JPEG image right here. And to do that, all we have to do is type the command type, then the document we wanna hide. And for that, it's going to be passwords text, or it could be the name of whatever text document or file that you wanna hide. And then go ahead and hit space. And then you wanna go ahead and do this lesser than symbol right here and then space again. And now you wanna type in the name of the file that you wanna hide it inside of. And for that, it's going to be nice.jpg. And then after that, you wanna make sure to make a colon. And then after the colon, you wanna type the name that you want this secret document to have. So in my case, I'm just going to type passwords and then hit enter and that's it. So now if we run a directory, you can see that the password text is still there, but we're gonna delete it now. So once we delete it and we run a directory again, you'll see that the password text is completely gone. However, if I wanna view that text, it's fairly easy to do. All I would do is type notepad because that's the program that the password text is going to open into. Then we're gonna type nice JPEG. We're gonna do colon again, and we're gonna type the word that we used before, which is passwords. And when I hit enter, as you can see, there's the passwords that we saved before, even though we no longer have the password text in the folder anymore. And let me show you one way that you can discover this right here, just in case you forget the name that you named it on. So I'm gonna close this right here. And what we're gonna do is type a directory. And when you type directory, you can see that there is no password here. It's just the JPEG image and the zip file that we have here. 
However, if we type directory switch R, as you can see, we can see the alternate data stream here within the JPEG file with the name password right here. Now, this is a great way to hide text documents, but what if you wanna hide something more than a text document? What if you wanna hide an entire zip file full of files and folders? Well, let me show you. Okay, so going back into here, you can tell that I have this secret zip right here that's over 10 megs, and the JPEG image is only one meg. So how are we gonna stick this zip file into that picture? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you how we're gonna do it. We're actually going to do it exactly the same way. So if I write type, and then I wanna hide the secret zip, the lesser than symbol, and then I'm gonna type the nice JPEG, then we're gonna do a colon, and then for this, I'm just gonna name it secret. And then hit enter, and it should put that secret zip into the JPEG file. Now, if we do a directory switch R, you'll see that right here, we have the secret as part of the data stream within the JPEG image right here. And if we go delete secret zip, and then run a directory again, you'll see that the only file within this folder now is the JPEG image, and it's only showing it's one meg. So if we click back over here, you can see that the JPEG image opens just fine, and it's the only file in this folder. However, there's a couple of things that will tip us off as to the fact that we're hiding something within this image. Let me show you. If you right click on the image and hit properties, you'll notice that the size of this file is only 1.6 megabytes, but the size in the disk is 12 megabytes. Now, if you ever see a file that has the size on disk being much larger than the file you're looking at, then that might give you a clue that there's something hidden inside that file. Let me show you how to get it out if in fact you want to recover that zip file later. Okay, so if you ever wanna get this zip file back, because obviously there's no point in hiding something if you can't actually view it later, what we're gonna do is go back to our command prompt right here, and then what we're gonna do is type in this command right here. We're gonna type expand, and then for expand, we wanna type the nice JPEG colon secret, and then we wanna make sure to give it a name. And that name is going to be secret.zip. And then once we do that, it will extract that zip file from the nice JPEG image that we have. So if we go back to our file here, you can see that there's the zip folder that we had before and we can open it up and it works just fine. These are just random files that I threw in here just to give it some size for the video. But even though we have extracted this secret document from this image, if you right click on the image and go to properties, you can still see it's still 12 megs on the disk. That's because the file hasn't actually been removed from the image. It's still in the image. And if we come back here and type dir switch r, you can see that all the alternate data streams are still there. Now, there's a couple of ways we can get rid of these. And this is another reason that makes alternate data streams pretty secure way to hide documents, at least if people don't know what they're looking for. Because let's assume that somebody takes this picture off of your computer for some reason. In this case, I'm actually gonna use a network folder in order to do this. So if I go into a network folder here, and if I was to take this nice JPEG and drag it over to a network folder, just like this, it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna copy this file without its properties? Now what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna strip all of the alternate data streams out and leave you with just the picture by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. It's gonna copy that image, and then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this image back. And we're gonna replace the file in the destination with the one that we just copied from the network drive. And if we go back into our command prompt and we type dir switch r, as you can see, there's no longer any alternate data streams. Now we still have the zip file that we extracted before, but we don't have the alternate data streams within the JPEG image like we did before. So by using alternate data streams, it's a manipulation of the NTFS file system. So if you move this file to any file system that isn't NTFS, like for instance, on my file server, that's a Linux file server, so it's not running an NTFS hard drive. So with that case in mind, it's stripping all of the alternate data streams out of the image, protecting the data, so if someone does try to steal the image, 
it doesn't really make a difference because all they're going to get is the image in the end. This also works if they try to forward the file through an email. So if they try to email it to themselves, it's also going to strip out the alternate data streams. So it's a good way to be able to secure your documents away from being removed from your computer. Now, if they were to copy it to a thumb drive that's formatted NTFS and then copy it from that drive to another computer that's also formatted NTFS, then it should save the alternate data streams. So. Like I said, it's not the most secure in the world, but it is fun to play with. So let me show you something else. So some of the neat things that you can do with alternate data streams isn't just including files also. Let me show you another thing you can do. I can actually create files that only exist in the alternate data stream. And let me show you how to do that. If I type notepad and then I type nice JPEG colon, and let's just say I wanna put, let's say I just wanna put diary. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna hit enter, and it's gonna open up Notepad and ask you if you wanna create a new file. We hit yes, and I'll type something like, follow the white rabbit. Okay, so there we go. We can go ahead and hit file, save, and then go ahead and close it. Now, as you can see here, if we run a directory, we still don't have any other files. And if we hit a directory slash R, you can see we have an alternate data stream simply called diary. Now, if we wanna open that, all we have to do is type, notepad, the name of our JPEG image, colon, diary, enter, and it'll give us our text document that's hidden within an alternate data stream. And there's all different ways that you can do this through the command prompt. For instance, if you don't wanna create a document, you just want to throw some text into an alternate data stream, all you'd have to do is type echo, then we're gonna do our parentheses, and I'm gonna type a very secret message parentheses and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the lesser than symbol space and then we're going to type in the name of our jpeg image colon super secret and enter and it's going to take that echo message and just essentially write it to the alternate data stream so now if i was to go directory switch r as you can see i have my super secret entry there and if i type in notepad then the name of our JPEG, colon, super secret, and open it, you'll see my very secret message. So as you can see, there's lots of practical uses for these methods, and they all come in handy in different circumstances. Ultimately though, the best way to secure private files and folders is through encryption and password protection. However, if you're just looking for a quick way to hide a text document or any other document or folder, these methods should be a good alternative. With all that said, if you know of any other ways to hide files and folders in Windows, then make sure to drop them down in the comments below. And if you like this video, then you might like this one here where I go through 10 must-know tips for Windows 10 and 11. As always, you guys have a great day.